horse is yet another breed that is descended from the Spanish horses brought to the New World. Journals of Cortez's exploration recorded two horses, one a pinto with white stockings and the other a dark roan with white patches that were the first known paint horses. As horses moved into the Western Plains, Native Americans began to use them. The Comanches in particular were drawn to these loud color horses. They were called by a variety of names, a pinto, a paint, a skewball, a pieball, and developed in just as many ways. In 1962, a group of spotted horse enthusiasts organized to preserve both color and stock type conformation. This was the American Paint Stock Horse Association. In 1965, this group merged with the American Quarter Horse Paint Horse Association to become today's breed registry, the American Paint Horse Association. Each paint horse has a particular combination of white plus any other equine color. Markings can be any size or shape and located virtually anywhere on the paint's body. Coat patterns are called Ofero, Tobiano, Tovero, or Solid. These colors, marking and patterns combined with stock type conformation, athletic ability, and agreeable disposition make the American paint horse an investment in quality. Let's give Suzanne and Miss Sherry Miller a round of applause. And next coming up, we've got Mr. Keith Asley on the American Quarter Horse. And this horse is Badger. And we're going to hit two balls with, uh, or, yeah, two balls with one hit right here. We also have the Palomino together. So this being a quarter horse and a palomino in color. This is a 15-year-old horse named Badger. The American quarter horse began in the 1600s as a cross between native horses of Spanish origin used by the colonists and English horses imported to Virginia. By the late 17th century, these horses were being raced successfully over quarter mile courses in Rhode Island and Virginia, and hence received the name quarter horses. The quarter horse was bred for performance and had considerable thoroughbred blood as well as traits of other lines. In the early 19th century, quarter horses were overshadowed by thoroughbreds, which ran better over long distances. They soon found a new acceptance in the western U.S. as stock horses. The breed's inherent quickness and agility made it ideally suited for tasks of the developing frontier. Its good nature, disposition, and natural cow sense made the quarter horse a favorite among cowboys in the open range area of the West. In 1940, the American Quarter Horse Association was organized and is now the largest horse breeders organization in the world. Modern American quarter horses are short and stocky with heavy muscular development. Since these horses are used to cut cattle from herds, fast starting, turning, and stopping ability and speed for short distance are essential qualities. You'll see a little bit more with the quarter horses later on. I think Jerry is going to work some cattle with uh, uh, his quarter horse and also with the dogs as well. So, Mr. Keith Isley and the American Quarter Horse. And the Arabian. The majestic horse. This is Miss Natalie Andrews on a four-year-old named GF Verizon. She competes in the Hunter Pleasure under saddle. And this horse, I think, is currently in training with Mr. Shannon Clark here in Pittsburgh. The American horse, or excuse me, the Arabian horse, 3,500 years ago, the hot-blooded horse assumed the role of the king maker in the East, including the Valley of the Nile and beyond, changing human history in the face of the world. Though the Egyptians were made aware of the vast world beyond their own borders by harnessing the horse to their chariots. The empires of the Haitas, the Osiris, the Babylonians, and the Persians rose and fell under their thundering hoes. His strength made possible the initial concepts of cooperative universal society such as the Roman Empire. From this horse evolved the Arabian, a breed with its origin as mysterious and ancient as the swirling desert sands where they made their home. Historically, the Arabian breed was a war horse capable of withstanding the extreme condition 
conditions of the Arabian Desert and covering long distance while moving quickly in and out of battle. The traits that were bred into the Arabian through ancient times created a versatile horse that is beautiful, possessing incredibly energetic, intelligence, and gentle disposition. Today's Arabians used for ranch work, pleasure and trail riding, and their shows are full of the pageantry and color of days gone by. With side saddle and native costume classes, as well as the regular disciplines of English riding and driving, hunt seat, dressage, and western riding. Ladies and gentlemen, the Arabian with Natalie Andrews. This is a neat little one coming up right here. The Chickateague. How many folks have been to the Outer Banks and seen the ponies down there? This is a Chickateague pony. So this little fellow right here is uh, nine months old. It's Percy. And he's being shown today by Ezra Beckenwright. He says, but I'm all alone. I don't want to go in there. Here I go, there. So the Chickateague Wild Horses, along the outer banks of our very own coast of North Carolina, roam four bands of wild horses. Descendants of the Spanish Mustangs brought by the early European explorers to set foot on what would become American shores. Today we are privileged and pleased to present to you the horses from the wild Spanish Mustangs of North Carolina. These horses have been designated by our state as a cultural treasure. In 2010, the colonial Spanish Mustang was named the state horse of North Carolina. Present day Ocracoke and Corolla wild horses, also called the banker horses, carry the distinguished features of Spanish type horses. Their even temperament, endurance, size, and the standing beauty which crops up frequently in the bank horses all point strongly to their dramatic history. These are the remnants of once numerous herds of Spanish stock which ran freely along the sandy islands of our coast. The Spanish Mustang Registry is satisfied that the banker horses, in particular the Corolla and the Chicotee, are as linearly pure to the 16th century Spanish importations as can be found in anywhere in North America today. This herd roams free on the northernmost outer banks of our state today. Folks, the Chickateague and Ezra. Well, he just felt proud of himself right there. And the Frisian. So here's a young man that is very proud of himself, and David is too. <laughs> okay, the Frisian, today being handled by David Zachman. David lives down here, uh, I guess we would say down towards Golston, and this is Magnum. Magnum is a three-year-old stud, and so he is all about himself, and he is the man. And if you want to question him, he will be glad to challenge you with that. The Frisian is a fam famous as the glossy black war horse of medieval times that earned knights into battle. The breed originated in Friesland in the Netherlands. Confirmation of this notable breed resembles that of the light draft, sturdy enough to carry a knight plus all of his armor, yet move with power and surprising grace and nimbleness. The Frisian successfully involved past its war horse heritage, and in the 18th and 19th centuries, they were in demand as harness horses for agriculture work as well as the trotting races that were so popular then. The Frisian became the horse of choice to work on dairy farms in the Netherlands, but as farms became, became mechanized and horses were being replaced by tractors, the breed survival was threatened. World War II slowed this down, however, as gas scarcity allowed the population and popularity of the Frisian to rebound. 
Yet another miracle occurred when the Strasbourg family, fleeing Nazi Germany for relocating in the Low Countries, discovered the show qualities of the Frisian. Using these horses and their circus performance exposed a wide range of people to their abilities, beauty, and intelligence, and thus the world began to notice and save the incredible Frisian. Most Frisians in today are black in color, although the occasional chestnut can be found. They rarely have white markings except for a small forehead star. They are also recognized by long, thick mane and tail and feathers, long silky hair on the lower legs, deliberately left untrimmed. Today's Frisians are used for dressage or pleasure riding and competitive and recreational driving, single and in teams. Their striking appearance and high-stepping action makes them a popular television and movie participants. Ladies and gentlemen, the Frisian, Magnum and David Zachman. And the Halflinger. Today's Halflinger today is being shown by Rebecca Fritz, Nick of University of Delaware. Nick is 11 years old, and if you'll get by and see Dr. Stephanie Fries and Nick and all his paintings, you'll see what he's all painted up for today. They're, I think they're using him as a little demo horse as well. The Halflinger is best known for its distinctive coloring, but in many qualities make it a versatile pony, standing just under 14 hands. The most notable characteristic of the Halflinger is its striking coat color, a golden chestnut color with a white or flaxen mane and tail. It is sturdily built with short, well-boned legs and featherings at the fetlocks. Halflingers are known for their willing but docile temperament and their uncomplicated nature. The modern-day Halflinger was christened in 1874 in Austria. A refined mountain mare, bred to a proud half-Arabian stallion, produced a colt named Folly. Today, all purebred Halflinger horses trace their ancestry back to Folly. The first Halflinger horses breeds were imported into the United States in 1958. Today, the Halflinger can be found in all corners of the world and is used as a pack horse and for draft work as well. Teams of matching Halflingers are popular in combined driving competitions and is versatile enough to do well under saddle, often participating in endurance competitions, dressage, show jumping, and trekking. Their size and calm nature make them a perfect fit for therapeutic riding programs. Whether your interest is trail riding, driving, or simply owning a delightfully family horse that you can trust with your children, Halflingers do it all with a smile. Folks, the Halflinger and Miss Rebecca Frutz. And Nick. And the Mustang. Today's Mustang has been ridden by Miss Alyssa. Miss Alyssa came from Germany today just to ride this horse. Reba is actually my personal horse. Uh, she is 14 years old and she was captured in Alfred Springs, Oregon. So if you'll notice when she's turned back to the crowd, when you look on the left side of her neck, you'll see some brands. Uh, there are little white markings up along her neck, up along the main line. And every Mustang that is controlled by the government has a brand as they're put out for adoption. Uh, they're actually put out and controlled. That brand says that horse can never be hold, sold for slaughter, nor can ever be used in a rodeo as bucking stock. So that's kind of neat. The term Mustang, which means ownerless beast, refers to the wild horses that roam the ranges of the western U.S. The Mustang is not a breed, but rather a product of many breeds that have mingled over the years. Swift, sure-footed, tough, and intelligent, Mustangs are well suited for the rugged conditions of life on the range. Today's Mustangs are descendants of horses that escaped from Spanish explorers, ranchers, miners, soldiers, and Native Americans. In the mid-17th century, they numbered between 2 and 4 million. Today, only about 50,000 survive. In 1971, Congress passed the Wild Free Roman Horse and Burrow Act, which states that wild free Roman horses are living symbols of the historic and pioneer spirits of the West. They contribute to the diversity of the forms 
within the nation and enrich the lives of the American people. The Bureau of Land Management, an agency of the U.S. Department of Interior, has authority to preserve and manage the herds. Yet the open range cannot support the number of wild mustangs along with other animals, and so the Bureau often to approve applicants the chance to adopt and provide a home for existing wild mustangs. Many have been removed from their brands, uh, bands and been placed with owners who have gentled and trained them. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Mustang and Alyssa. And the Gypsy Vanner. The Gypsy Vanner today is Buzz, being handled by Miss Joni, uh, excuse me, Jody uh, Griswold. And Buzz is a little six year old gilding. And I think Buzz has been under saddle about two years now. And Buzz was bred over in towards Ashboro. And Jody actually got him right after he came out from being under saddle with us. The Gypsy Banner horse was selectively bred for over a half a century to create the perfect horse to pull the Gypsy Caravan. In 1996, the first Gypsy Banner horses came to North America. So they've only been in North America for about 23 years now. The Gypsy Banner is often referred to as a people-sized draft horse. The genetic origins of the breeds include the Shire, the Clydesdale, and the native British ponies such as the Dales. The Gypsy Banner is not a color breed. It is a body type with heavy bone and broad body like a draft, but with the majority of the breed standing 14 to 15 hands at the withers. The Gypsy Banner comes in any color, solid, tobiano, and splash. The first characteristics often notice is the abundance of feathers flowing from behind the knees and hocks, as well as the long, free-flowing mane and its tail. In addition to adding the amazing looks, the Gypsy Banner possesses a temperament that is friendly and engaging. They also described as mainly eager to please, confident, and loyal with a genuine sociable outlook. The Gypsy Horse is renowned for its gentle nature. Originally bred to pull the Gypsy Wagon, these horses are now being used in all disciplines. You will see them pulling carts and carriages, ridden in the dressage ring, as well as fences and western pleasure mounts. Buzz, until real recently, his mane was so long, it was over four feet. So when he would eat, he would step on his mane so she had to trim it back. It had gotten so long. So that's why his mane is short like it is but in no time it'll be hanging way below the girth of his neck. So we have Buzz and Miss Jody from a Gypsy Banner. Today's Morgan is written by Miss Kathy Beckerdright and it's Aria. She's a nine year old mayor. The Morgan horse developed from one bay colt named Figure, born in 1980, or excuse me, in 1789, which belonged to a teacher named Justin Morgan who lived in Randolph, Vermont. As was the practice of the day, Figure became known by its own owner's name, the Justin Morgan horse. Its ability to outwalk, outtrot, outrun, and outpull other horses was legendary. His stud services were also offered throughout Connecticut River Valley and various Vermont locations over his lifetime. However, his most valuable asset was the ability to pass on his distinguishing characteristics, not only to his offspring, but through several generations. Our Morgan horses today are derived from this unique American horse. The Morgan is easily recognized by its proud carriage and upright, graceful neck, blended with soundness of limb, athleticism, and stamina. He is a free-moving and calm under Western tack or elegant and aristocratic when ridden in English style. A trackable temperament allows the Morgan to excel when driving in single or multiple hitches. He is companionable on a quiet pleasure ride. He can work as a sensible partner in a long day of ranch work or endurance riding as well. And he excels as a show horse in formal riding disciplines. The Morgan desires to be with people. He is indeed the horse that chooses you. Ladies and gentlemen, Aria and the Morgan, ridden by Miss Catherine.
and the Lustanos. And today's Lusitanos are being brought to us by Donnie Moore Farms. Donnie Moore is just south of Siler City off Highway 421. You'll see they have a really beautiful facility on the right-hand side, uh, just a few miles south of town, Miss Victoria. And mm, Mondego and Macadoo, maybe if I pronounce those properly. Macondo. The Lusitanos have a rich history that dates back over 5,000 years. They were originally war horses from Portugal and the Liberian Peninsula that were trained to fight. They would on cue strike out with a front leg and hit an enemy. They were and still are so agile and quick that they can canter in a circle or canter sideways to evade an enemy. Can you imagine the bond that you would have with this intelligent equine? Today, those skills of agility, speed, intelligence, and a strong desire to please the rider are deeply part of what the Lusitano is. This desire of the Lusitano to be with their person is one of reasons that are so popular today. Present-day Lusitanos compete in every area of equestrian competition, from dressage, working equ equitation, eventing, and western events. Their athleticism and desire to please are what makes them able to compete in so many different areas. We know of one mayor who was part of the search and rescue team in Virginia and was credited for finding a lost young autistic child due to their keen sense of awareness. Donnie Moore is honored to have the breed and train these horses for over 12 years, matching them with their perfect riding partners. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lusitano with Donnie Moore Farms. And this will conclude our show of breeds today. Thank you all so much for your attention.